I promise this video is going to be pretty quick and easy. We're going to look at async actions with promises. So using the example from the last video with our user reducer, we're going to go ahead and implement this with a promised base rather than a thunk based middleware. So first thing we need to do is go ahead and install Redux promises. So npm install redux dash promise dash middleware and go ahead and save that as well. That will install the dependency that we need. We can then go ahead and npm start to start our server. So using promises is really, really easy. Obviously, the first thing we need to do is import it. So we're going to import promise from redux promise middleware. And then all we need to do is replace our thunk middleware with promises. And we have to call our promises middleware like we do with our logger. The next thing we can do with promises is rather than having this large store dot dispatch method, we can actually condense this into a single method. And this method is going to simply return a promise, which we can do certain things with. So store dot dispatch. And with this dispatch, we simply pass in an object like we normally would with a type. And this time I'm going to go with a more conventional type and more of a best practice. So I'm going to have fetch underscore user. That's kind of the more succinct and easier to remember way of doing it and the more standard way of doing it than get user. The next thing we pass in this object is the payload. And this time with the promise rather than the thunk, our payload is simply our Axios request. So it's our axios.get. And we're going to pass that URL in to our payload. And that's all you need to do to start using promises in our store.dispatch. So that is now going to go ahead and do an async action, go to our API, get the data back, and return it in a promised version. So the next thing we need to do is in our reducer, we need to change the cases because obviously we've changed the naming convention. So our get user becomes fetch user. Our user received becomes fetch user fulfilled, full filled. And our error becomes fetch user rejected. And that standard is used anytime you have an action. So you simply pass in the sort of the prepend and then the Redux promises adds the status of the action. And I'm actually incorrect there, it's fetch user pending. So just quickly, if you're not familiar with promises, there are three stages you need to worry about. There's the pending stage, that's obviously when we're fetching our user. There's the fulfilled stage, that's when we get our data back. And there's the rejected. So they're the three stages you need to look out for. So in our reducer, we have the action that we're doing, and then the Redux promise middleware adds on the promise status, essentially, either pending, fulfilled, or rejected. And the final thing we need to do is we just need to change the way we access our payload data. So before I was passing in the object as action payload results or whatever it was, whereas now it comes in as our data. So it's gonna be action dot payload dot data dot results zero and then the name of the property we want to get from that and if we save that we should get the same functionality as we did before so go ahead and click new random user and you saw there very briefly we had the pending and now we've got the user received and you'll notice that our actions are fetch user fulfilled and it's actually fetch user but the convention is to put pending on the end of it and your reducer will know exactly what that action is. And as you can see, we do actually get the pending. So that is hitting our fetch user pending case. So we have fetch user pending. We're sending the request, fetch user fulfilled. We've got the data back. And obviously we have to access the data via the data the results property itself. And we have a fetch user rejected which if we go ahead and chuck some rubbish into that API, save and refresh, we will see we get pending and then we get request failed with status code 404. 
So you can see there that if you like using promises, and I certainly do, you can see that it's kind of much easier and it's much clearer when you're actually dispatching your action as you just need to dispatch the request and then the actions themselves and the payloads will be dispatched for you in the middleware and returned to your reducer for you to do whatever you want with them. And it kind of enforces this nice best practice with the naming, i.e. pending, fulfilled and rejected. And that's all there is to using a Redux Promise middleware to make async actions. Thanks for watching, liking, subscribing and commenting. I'll see you in the next video.